everybody, welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Oh, Coming at you yeah. from Lockdown Land. Yeah, yeah. Week 19, we've all got long grey beards. Is it week uh, 19? No way. It's not. It's like week 9, or, mate, or maybe something like that. It feels like it's been just going forever. Are we now stuck in a perpetual land of... No, things are starting to look up. People are opening primary schools yeah. and... New Zealand's boasting about how fucking awesome they are. Yeah, they've and, uh, they've um, seemed to have done a good job getting through all this uh, old New Zealand. There's eh? like three yeah. people that live there. Come on. I don't think they're yeah. a good metric. I was well. thinking, right, so I watched a thing this week. I watched The Terror, okay? Right. Um, we're not gonna, we're not going to have another episode where we talk about post-apocalyptic end-of-the-world stuff, are we? Not really, okay. no. Okay. Not right, really. Good. Just a little. The terror is about... Something which has also been written a lot it's about, about an apocalypse. TV shows okay, about. imagine this: an apocalypse, <laughs> and then people trying to survive post-apocalypse. Okay, <laughs> but it's not a post-apocalyptic <laughs> film. All right, very it's important. Half, half, it's half that. So basically, it's about the lost uh, expedition to the to find the Northwest Passage oh, in yeah. 19, 1850. Um, which was kind of one of these great things of the age of exploration where the British sent out these two ships with loads of men, like 150 men, out mm. there. And they never came back. What were they wearing? Uh, bikinis. They were wearing they were, oh, the finest nice. bikinis in the British Empire. Uh, nice. It was like m- matted uh, wool. Wool. It was wool, matted wool. And it was, wasn't as good because it, when it got wet, it would freeze. Whereas right. the animal clothes that the Eskimos wore... Right. Um, was actually a much better thing to wear. Um, anyway, they died. It's a sp- not a spoiler because it's history. Um, and also the show <laughs> kind of says right at the start that no one came back. Um, so you kind of go into it expecting that. But they died of this sort of combination of starvation, hypothermia. They, they, they went a bit mad because they had zinc deficiency it's theorised that all the tins that they brought in them had been improperly sealed because they'd been bidded on by the lowest bidder, you know, made in like six weeks flat. And so they were all poisoned with lead. And so everyone, and also they had, they had a water distillation system in the ship. And, right. But they were there and stuck in the ice for like three or four years. And relatively recently, um, the wrecks have been discovered by Canada up in the very north. Um, only like, you know, five or ten years ago they were discovered. And um, they've been... Like trying to piece together what happened on this on this ill-fated voyage, and the TV show kind of takes it a little bit into the um, realm of science fantasy. fiction. But uh, I thought it was a really cool because it's got Jared Harris in it, you know, from Chernobyl. Have you seen? Oh you guys yeah, seen Chernobyl? yeah, yeah. Which yeah. which one is he in in Chernobyl? The main, the main one. Yeah, he was yeah. also in uh, Mad Men. If you remember, oh, he's he great. Was, yeah, he's such he a good is, actor. Oh, isn't he great? Yeah. Like he carries he the thing really on good, his shoulders yeah. the he's, whole way. He's very really good actor. I didn't I didn't know his name was Jared Harris. So I'll try and remember that. It's it's, Jared, it's very yes. alliterative. Jared Harris, but he's English, isn't he? Messages for Jared Harris. Like you <laughs> you know he's got like a voicemail or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he is a, he's absolutely great. He's fantastic. Though, um, yeah. And yeah, he's also on um, The Expanse as well. Uh, oh, is he in that now? Another great show. Or was he always in it, actually? Was he always in it, or is he just yeah, newly he's in the, it? Yeah, he's the leader of the um, kind of rebellious asteroid man. That's um, right, yeah, he is. The... He was in that, wasn't he? Yeah, totally forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, he's and been he's... in a couple of bits and pieces. He's a, it's it's funny because he's not like um like like he's very he's very watchable, but he's not like a, a like I wouldn't say he's like um you know like a like a like an like an eye candy sort of guy, right? You know, like, well he he would typically be the bad guy, right? You yes, think because yeah, he's a little bit weird him, looking, he's a, bit a little weird bit English, looking and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's like kind of you. He looks like a bad guy, but kind of being. He's, it's kind of weird. He's just become these leads in in things. Yeah, and yeah. Man and no, he, well, he just, he's good. Like I said, he's very like uh, he, he's he's a good actor, and and he's just I, I just find him like like interesting to watch. But I think it's just because he's a little bit sort of not. I don't want to say weird looking. He's not weird looking. <laughs> it's, you, you just he's just not like he's recognizable. Let's put he's it not, that way. He's, he's yeah. just not just this like chiseled sort of like you know Brad like with like fucking a tan and stuff like that, which you know it seems to be like every 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 male lead is 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 that. So it's 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 nice to just have somebody who's not. You that. know you know when I'm when I'm scrolling through when I'm scrolling through Amazon Prime Video or Netflix looking for something to watch. And I see the little picture and I think, oh, that looks interesting. 
And you're right. Like, 80% of the time, it's Brad in the lead. Yeah. And it always says, three seasons available. And I yeah. check out instantly. Because I'm like, yeah. I don't want to watch three seasons of Brad. Yeah. You look at that face, you just think, like, the whole premise of the show or the movie is like, they interrupted my spring break for this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like kind of, I don't know. It's not its not that it's massively off-putting, but I, it's just like a breath of fresh air sometimes to have somebody a bit different in a role that's like, you know, also, maybe a bit more interesting to watch than you know the, the they, they tried-tested and true formula, you know? But they can act. Like, that's the thing. Guys like that don't get in movies based on their looks. No. Again, no offense to Jared Harris. Yeah. He's a fine-looking man. But... He's never going to be the romantic lead no. when they've got Brad's coming out of the ass, right? So if he's in something, you know he's in it because he's good. Not because yeah. he's just this week's sort of fucking conveyor belt of Brad's. He's the last Brad, Brad number 118. Man, he was in that. so good in Chernobyl. Holy shit, he was so good. He's amazing. He, he, yeah. he does feel like an, a, an ordinary human as well, like in a sense. like Because those Brad's feel detached from reality. I know they are... There are people like that who are real, and I've met them, and they're just these like these six foot tall Hollywood actors who are incredibly gorgeous, and they have this like aura of kind of surreality around them, where it's like they don't feel real. Whereas I think we can all kind of see him as the slightly, slightly you know not perfect teeth, you know not like a real person. Sort of, damn it! Yeah, like yeah. also I, I feel like those Brads have all been taught to act the exact same way, and. They just express emotion, like it's like there's some class where they they graduate from from Brad University, Brad, College. Brad Academy, Brad, Brad. Brad Academy. <laughs> they come out of the Brad dude. Academy. Everybody, everybody does a a jumping high five and yells "dude" when they graduate. <laughs> they throw their snapbacks in the air. <laughs> yeah, fuck's sake. Yeah, no. We yeah. shouldn't. We shouldn't talk down Brad Pitt though. He has been good in some things lately yeah I, I i'm i actually think he's matured as an actor a little bit i mean he was excellent in moneyball but you've got to get brad pitt playing brad pitt yeah i've, I've always like you can't have him playing I've, liked, else. I've always liked brad pitt though i don't i don't think i've i mean i haven't seen like every movie that he's been in uh but i don't i don't think i've seen any movies that i've disliked him in i mean he was very good in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I thought. Yes, he was. I thought everybody uh, was, was really good in that. I thought that yeah. was just a really good movie. Like, I, uh, I hated the last 20 minutes, but up to that point, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I thought, the, I thought, I, I, well, I just thought everything was good. I thought the last 20 minutes were, were great because it was just such a, such a contrast to the rest of the movie, but it was, it was just, it was, very, it was very sort of like funny and stuff too, the last so 20 minutes of the movie. That oh, was good. It was really good. So no, I, I watched I watched all that this week. I sort of binged it while I was derping around playing some crappy games. And I just I just realized like that these guys, these soldiers, it was a different time really, I suppose, these guys, and they knew what they were in for, but just being trapped in Arctic sea ice on your boat for three years. Like yeah, yeah, that's gonna suck that. Like fucking hell, man. Like and eating like like if bring and bring enough supplies with you to last three years. Yeah. Just thinking about how I think that they must have killed well. stuff that lived on the ice, like seals, surely. Seagulls, seals, maybe a they, polar yeah, bear. Yeah, they must have they must have had to have done something like that. You gotta you you find a like people always end up finding some sort of way, right? Even though it might be a bit yeah. gross or like um, was it? unconventional or whatever. There's something to do with that and people when I think it was it Shackleton when he Went to the South Pole, sort of fifty years later, and tried to tried to sort of get there, and then kind of massively had all these terrible things that got him stuck in the ice. I think his guys ended up eating a lot of seal and bear, and I think something like bear liver, I think, contains a lot of I don't know heavy metal. It's, in it it's vitamin D, I think, is in their is it in their tongue in a in a polar bear's tongue. There's there's is so much vitamin D that it will kill you. I don't know if that's a myth or whatever. But yeah. I remember There's that something being weird a... about eating bear liver is really bad for you. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, because so you got to kill a bear. First of all, yeah. yeah, that's probably well, the, exactly the most dangerous um, part of it. Yeah, um, I, I, you I, know the thing about all those guys like Shackleton and all these lads is, to me, I don't look at them as heroic because if you look at like Amundsen and people like that, they went and did these expeditions and they were fucking prepared. I feel like we had a very arrogant. British attitude to it, which is, oh, stuff and nonsense. We'll just put on some heavy coats and pack some bully beef in a tin and we'll be fine. We'll take some donkeys. Ha ha ha, what a lark. Yeah. And they go off and do this and they all fucking die. Whereas Amazon is look at them and thinking, what the fuck? You guys didn't even bring huskies or sleds or anything? You're just carrying stuff? Like it was, 
ill prepared. And I think it was an, an arrogance rather than a, a, a bravery, foolhardiness, just silly. Yeah. Like I read that, uh, my mum got me a sh the, the book about Shackleton. I can't remember who wrote it. It's got a foreword by, uh, fuck, what's his name? That British actor, Kenneth Branagh. Saying, um, oh God. you know, if you want, if you want like preparedness, go for Amundsen. If you want something else, go for this guy. But if you need guts, get shackled. Pray, get on your knees and pray for Shackleton. But I'm like, he put all these people in this position through lack of preparation. I mean, you wouldn't applaud NASA if they stuck a couple of lads in a tin can with no plan how to get them back and just said, oh, we'll hope for the best. You'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck were you thinking? Like that, the that, they were the, the NASA of their yeah. day and they didn't even put the, any preparation The difference into was it. that Roald Amundsen had gone actually and was the first person to discover the Northwest Passage. He actually did it in a little boat yeah. with like five other guys. But he knows and, what he's doing. And he actually learned from the Inuit there that how to basically live on the ice and what move stuff around and took all that knowledge to the Antarctic, went to the Antarctic, turned up, two months, bam, South Pole, left, right? Perfect. Scott was there for fucking... Like, because he, he had to get money for his expedition. He had to get massive ships, all these things. He had, like, a fucking a, a steam train or two. Yeah. Like, he had all this weird shit. And then he actually, like, he actually was, like, commissioned by the Royal Academy who were make, getting him to collect fucking meteorites on the way, you see. Imagine, like, imagine we were going to the moon in 1969 and they were like, in order to fund this, we're also going to have to go to the asteroid belt <laughs> get, like, pick up a load of fucking asteroids just as well, just to make it pay for itself. That's just such like a human British approach to it all as well, isn't it? Yeah. And so, I mean, that wasn't his downfall, but, but it contributed to it for sure. Didn't they, they took, I'm pretty sure they took donkeys to the North Pole when he went there, Scott. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they took donkeys not, with them. I wouldn't be They would certainly be didn't take huskies and sleds and stuff like that they they fucked it basically they completely fucked it and i i, I don't understand why they're hailed as heroes they were fools and they were willing fools who just didn't bother preparing apologies to any scott fans out there but i'm i'm set in my way well they, they were they were very they prepared a lot they were very brave fools but they prepared within their knowledge base that's the but thing that's, they didn't uh, they, bother they thinking didn't, they didn't go and say didn't how research, are we going to do this no. yeah they just said what are we going to need for this? Oh, it's going to be a bit cold we'll take but i a think cup. that's ego ego rather than exactly. foolishness you know i think that's that's them thinking all these norwegians aren't going to know what to do are they yeah it's not like they I live mean, in the cold it was at a time when norway wasn't even that stable because i think norway and sweden had only just broken up like they would, they were a kingdom, joint kingdom. They were fresh they? on a They've split They've been up. dating for such a long time yeah. as well. It was such the South a South Pole was like a rebound thing for them. Yeah. <laughs> In other news, my kids, my uh, kids are slowly losing their minds. Um, right. And so my my youngest has decided that she's going to become sort of like a spy, and she's been spying on our neighbours. From right. her bedroom window in the evening. Oh, this works out perfect down. for you, doesn't it? Because don't you don't you actively spy on your neighbor who you think is a spy anyway? No, no, no. Well, like I remember I, spoke about it if, I said a few weeks ago that it, they're not spying, and I wasn't spying on them. I would just look. Again you spied go, on them to find out that the spy house wasn't full of spies. You're teaching her this, people. No, no, I didn't spy on the spy house. I would just She's look occasionally and podcast, go, "What's going she? in over there?" This is different. She looks out the front window. She can right. see the road, and she's just watching what's happening. Because remember, they're stuck inside. So when you hang on, when you're doing it, it's nosy. When she's doing it, it's spying. She told me. <laughs> she told me, and she's recorded what they've done. So here's her record of a couple of nights ago. Twelve. This is eight twelve p.m. She's got a logbook. Yes, she logged. Oh my it. god! It, she's like, like am I terror. five? Yeah. Eight twelve. Eight what? Eight the last <laughs> can of boiled ham today. <laughs> Girl glances at herself in the mirror. So she obviously saw someone across the road looking at themselves in the mirror. Eight twelve. That was. 8.13, woman takes her dog out, as usual, brackets, calls dog <laughs> hunter, close brackets, addendum, strange. She wrote, <laughs> strange. I love this. Oh strange. 6.16, airplane flew by. 8.21, Ocado shop goes by. 8.23, man goes by with his kids, still don't know who he drops them off to. 8.27, man drives off, think he's an athlete. 8.29, Coco comes back from her walk. That's a, a neighbour has a dog called Coco. 8.40, a bird swoops past my neck. And uh, <laughs> and then 8.30, uh, sorry, 8.45. How, how far out the window is she leading? Our neighbour took this? out his trash. Well, 
I'll be honest, I think she's leaning out quite far. And a bird obviously sw swooped right past her. Either way, she said her neck, not <laughs> swoops past me, but specifically her neck. Yeah. She must have felt she's... a draft of, of wing flap on her neck. But either she's, way... She's goggling out the window. Yeah, I know. This is, this is a very subtle... 8.52 p.m. Fell out the window. <laughs> <laughs> 8.53 p.m. Calling for help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are funny. But they both oh, do it. They, they have like two windows and they'll open each one and they'll want to lean out one window and one will lean out the other. And I'm like, please don't lean out too far. Like, God damn. You, you could fall. <clears throat> yeah. But um, it's uh, it, there's like a little, you know, I don't, I, I mean, if they did fall, it would, they'd obviously get hurt, but it's not like they, they're on like the eighth story or anything. So I, I do tell them to be careful. There's a, it's a very large windowsill. So if they were to, you know, they'd have to literally crawl out onto the windowsill. Then there's like a sloped okay. roof bit beneath them that they'd have to somehow climb onto, and then they might fall into the garden. But uh, is she got, I, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure they're okay. Has she got any binoculars, or is she like peeking out behind the? I have kind binoculars. Of the I refuse right. to give them binoculars to spy on our neighbors. <laughs> Think that might not go down well. But I remember when I was a kid, I used to. <clears throat> look out the window and you watch things happening and the world going by and it's interesting and even cats and dogs understand that it's interesting my cat often sits in the window watching things the dog likes to sit in the window and watch people go by it's just interesting and i thought it's nice well, for them to this still is called people watching yeah people so this watching. is um a thing that actually you have that, that uh, when i went on holiday to sort of i think it was either paris or rome or something it's very common there to Almost like you go on, you look at TripAdvisor and it's like, this is a great place to watch people go by. And I didn't even realize that was a thing until I went there. But they, on the continent, it's very much like a thing that you do. Yeah. You sit somewhere, you watch other people do stuff and mill around. And you, I guess it's a kind of fun thing to do as well, to like talk about what you think that guy's doing yeah. and what you think this guy might be that. up to. You could do it sometimes on Google Maps as well. You can walk around, and the most interesting thing on Google Maps is what the fucking people are doing. Absolutely, you know, when you're at Street View, and it's like, oh, I wonder what that what's that guy carrying, and it's you know, well, that guy's running. What's he running from? I can remember it's... last year we went down to to uh, Bournemouth for my sister's fortieth birthday. We rented a flat in the arcade, not not an arcade like a fun arcade, but it's just like, you know, it's like a sort of uh, an area with shops that's like a mall, but it's just one passageway and it tends to link two sides of, of a road. So if where, where my mum lives in Bournemouth, there's like an arcade that runs through. It's very old. It's like a big archway thing, quite high. I mean, you can fit three story buildings in there, so it's, it's quite high and there's all shops and stuff like that. So I sat in the window of our rented apartment and I just watched the arcade for like an hour. And I think the interesting thing is how much little, little tiny dramas play out just on one small area. And normally we just walk past stuff and because we're on our way somewhere, we don't notice all this stuff. But there was like this guy uh, went into the music shop and bought a guitar and I saw them in there trying out all the guitars. He left with the guitar, he was very happy. And it was like obviously a big moment for him. He bought his, his first guitar and he was chatting away to his friend. He called him up as soon as he got out of the shop. Nice. There was a guy who was trying to deliver a cake to a cafe <laughs> and he brought the cake in the cake box, put it down and rang the doorbell, nothing. And for for like the full hour, he was there for half an hour calling everyone he knew to try and figure out why they weren't there. And he's ringing the doorbell, ringing the doorbell. Finally, the woman comes to open up and he was like, oh, you've been in there the whole time. She goes, yeah, I didn't hear you. I was downstairs in the basement. He's like, oh, I've been here for half an hour. And they had a laugh about it and stuff like that. And I was like, this is weird because you'd never notice any of this stuff. No. But it's all these people's little days playing out and interacting. And and if you just watch for a little bit, I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, I do. I think that I've, would I've work always, well on the diary I've as well. I've done that stuff like that. Like I've always sort of... Like if we if we're like out somewhere sitting down like just having a rest like having a drink or something like that I, I always just like w watch people and what they're doing yeah, and stuff like it's that. It's intriguing. It's, it is interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's it's interesting because you realize that uh, that we're all the same in so many ways. But then, yeah. Uh, you realize as well that some people are just completely fucking insane as well. Yeah. Like the stuff that they're doing and or how they're acting or or whatever is just like. I don't know. Some people you feel like you you would just love you'd love to just like go up to them and sort of like uh like like in a movie or whatever, you know, you just like stare at them and they're like, "Huh? What's going on?" And you just like <laughs> pass them through your through like uh like you, you know, like uh, tele telepathy or something like that. You pass them all this like knowledge and you're like <laughs> and then they sort of look at you and they're like, "Oh yeah, fuck, I am an idiot. Like what am I doing?" You're like <laughs> 
I was that idiot at one point. I I did all that fucking dumb shit, and now look, I've looked at you, and you know, you know what I mean. Like, no, there's some. I, I <laughs> sometimes oh, I <laughs> it's like you lost me. No, okay. There's got to be no. There's there's definitely a scene in, in a movie somewhere that I'm thinking of, but I can't. Maybe maybe whoever's listening can help me with this, okay? <laughs> yeah, please. Right. Okay. So somebody walks up to somebody, okay? And is staring Right, so I'm still I'm, I'm st- stood over the dead body okay. of like a polar bear and I'm about to eat its liver. Yes. And- yes. And then somebody emerges from like a snowstorm, okay? And you look at them and you're like, "What the fuck?" And this person is staring at you very very uh like uh, intensely, right? And they're just walking sure. towards you, walking towards you. And you're looking at this person and then they stop and they just stand there and they're staring at you and you're looking at them. And all of a sudden you feel something like, you know, like a tingling on the back of your neck or what neck or whatever. But it's that person is like transferring their brain or something like to you by staring at you. And then you have like this epiphany or like you have this realization that like, hang on a sec. The fuck, why am I eating this bear liver? Or why am I about to, you know what I mean? Like this person is giving you like some sort of warning or something. Hmm. It's like a wake up call. Yeah. They've transferred their knowledge, yeah. their experiences yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm sure I've seen that in a movie. And if I haven't, I get dibs on that one because I think that would make a great scene in a movie when I finally hmm. do make a movie. So so it's almost like rather than a virus that gives you, makes you cough and stuff and be all gross and have a fever, it makes you smarter. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And then you're like... You know, you, you maybe you've given the, this knowledge to this person, like, don't wear track pants if you're going to town. Well, maybe it just wakes you up to your surroundings. Or and then there, that person just, like, realizes, hang on a sec. Fuck, I'm wearing track pants. I got to get home. I got to go home. There are those change. moments yeah. when you, you, you stop and you look at yourself and you're like, what the fuck is happening? What, <laughs> what, where, what am I doing? Did you have one of those with your personal trainer? <laughs> when you say, <laughs> what? I, you have you have them from the time fuck? to time, don't you? you? You just look around and you're like, oh fuck! It's like you're just <laughs> you're just seeing it with new eyes. Yeah. Or yeah. you look in the mirror and you're like, oh man, what's happening? The ravages of time. The fresh peepers, yeah. All of a sudden, you realize. Hang <laughs> yeah. On or like you know, you're sat, you know, eating a pizza out of like an old pizza thing on the sofa, just surrounded by mess. Yeah. yeah. Like with the curtains drawn, and you're like just slobbed out, and you've like. Yeah. Knocked over the a bottle of I don't know cod liver oil. Or yeah, and it's like you're staining drinking. your carpet and stuff, but you haven't bothered to clean it up. Or that's one thing I thought this week was you know how in Animal Crossing and other games like Factorio or even World of Warcraft, you spend so much time and effort making and organizing and sorting and building and creating and kind of like making this beautiful thing, this product, which takes hours and hours and hours, and you sit back and you're like, wow, that's amazing. And then you look around your house and it's like, fucking, it's a (laughs) shithole. And you're like, you've got a big pile of clothes like on the floor. And you've got like a load of unwashed dishes in the kitchen and all the cupboards are all disorganized and shit. And you like thinking, you're like, oh shit, I didn't bother to pick up any of the... Well, it's kind of like... run out of washing up liquid. It's kind of like like, you see, like you see this, like there's just this like stunning human being okay it can be a man or a woman or whatever okay very well presented you know immaculately groomed you know wearing like the latest fashion they just look great like brad you know just they everything about them you just think holy fuck this person has got it all i bet you like their house smells really nice and i bet there's really and you go back to their house and there's like fucking like 20 plates on the floor like underneath like a bunch of old soggy pizza boxes which are all underneath like mountains of clothes and stuff like that they're just like fucking total slobs like they just live like fucking degenerates but they look great sort of thing no 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 they're they they live a perfect life in the physical world but their game world is all a fucking mess <laughs> no no right? no no they, come they've on they've got like a shitty disorganized <laughs> mess of the game and they can't they to file in the right place it's a complete shithole whereas for me it's the opposite all of my stuff that i create and build is like lovely how do i get myself to take the same care and attention to my real life that i do to my video game you, well you need to 
you need to somehow um, maybe incorporate this into your Google Glasses or something like. You need an achievement system that tracks your everyday life. You know what I mean? I, I do. That's why people like Fitbits and stuff like that. Maybe like, like a little dopamine injector as well. That like when I get an, an IRL achievement, yeah, injects it. me with like drugs. That's what that's what keeps you. Makes that's me what feel keeps good. You doing uh, things in games, right? It is. It is that sort of like release of. Yeah, it gives me like plus five inventory space, yeah, exactly. and I'm like, wow. But you don't That's good. necessarily – you get that by from doing stuff in real life, but your mind tricks you into thinking that you won't get that, right? Because your 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 mind is saying, ah, fuck, you don't want to do that. Like that's going to be – that's going to take a long time, and <laughs> you, got, you got better things to do sort of thing. But if you went and like actually tidied up your living room or whatever, and you got to the end of tidying up and you looked at it, you'd be like, oh, shit, yeah, this is great. I've done a good job on this. Like, it's nice and clean. I do I do feel better when I've done stuff. But I think like just my motivation level to it is just automatically at a lower priority list. I don't know why. Yeah. Because um, we're lazy. Yes. That's it. We are. But not in game. Because, you, well, because <laughs> yeah. any time spent doing that stuff means time taken away from playing video games, right? So that's why... The thing is, if you look at the way we play video games, and you look at the way people who are really, really good at video games play video games, we're still lazy. Yes. Like, I, I'll take Dota as an example. I, I've been the same skill level, more or less, for the eight years I've been playing Dota. Like, maybe I, I am better than I was when I started out, but it's not like I'm markedly better. You couldn't look at me now and think, oh, he's really improved. But no. well. I haven't put any effort into improving. I've just been playing it the way I like it uh -huh. and just enjoying it and trying to get better at certain heroes. But if I wasn't a lazy fucker, yeah. I could just fucking plow through ranked and you know really work on this and watch the pros and watch replays of my games so yeah, i'm lazy in something i love doing I've, I've, i'm just lazy i've been down that that road uh a number of times with games and i just it's not in uh, it's not enjoyable like i yeah, it becomes I've, like I've come work. to the conclusion that yeah it does become a bit like work and you spend so much time trying to achieve something when the it, it it's meant to be you're that you're achieving fun like first and foremost right or like some enjoyment or whatever but like anytime i've played a competitive game like overwatch or or anything like that i always get end up in the same spot i, I get to the get to a point where i'm like what the why am i fucking wasting my time on this like why do I even want to be good at this game? Like I don't I don't even enjoy playing it anymore, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like because I've somehow managed to sabotage or suck all the fun out of it in the first place by taking it seriously or, you know, trying to to get better. When there's plenty of games out there that are just actually fun to play and you get enjoyment out of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's like I don't yeah. know if it's being yeah, I mean it, maybe it's being lazy a little bit, but um there's definitely something in uh, the way a person thinks or whatever, like look at like a game like Hearthstone, for example, or like um, there's still people playing Hearthstone now, like streaming and stuff <laughs> that have been playing it since it came out. <laughs> and they've done that's that's what they've done every single day since that game came out. Yeah, it's horrible to think. Of. And I I just can't. I feel sorry for I those just guys. cannot do that. Like my I I. I I don't know. Maybe I'm fickle or something, but I just move on from games very quickly. Like. I'll binge a game for like a month or maybe two months or something, and then I'm done. You know what I mean? Like yeah, a couple I, of hundred hours that. of a game, and I've done all the things that I want to do in it or whatever, and, you know, that's it. Like, unless something uh, yeah, new comes but, uh, yeah. out that brings me back to it or that makes it good, exciting though. again, I'm not going to play a game for years and years and years and years. And I think that's no, it's good, also part of why I would never there's be. There's also like a, there's a, there's an element of a solved game, yes. right? So they talk about these games where people have, everyone's played it to the point where everything's sort of known and there's kind of a best way if you like to play it or at least a, a, an understood meta um, that you can only keep fresh by rotating and messing around and create uh, and rejigging that puzzle but every time you solve the puzzle from then on it's not as fun because it's not as un it's not there's not as many interlocking parts and i think you know part of as always the joy in life is not the destination it's the journey it's like the it's every day yeah. you know living in the moment you should always be you know not thinking i will be happy when this happens or i will do this when this happens you have to think that every day is 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 what life is it's not you know the end you don't get to the end of your life and think oh finally i'm happy oh i'm dead now yeah. it's it's yeah. it's best to like um take it as it comes and i think that a game is is 
is fun to solve. As humans, we like to solve puzzles. We like to solve mysteries. We like to to make stories out of mundane things. Ooh, you know, I think a, your daughter. This is interesting. This is interesting. Yeah, talking about solving stuff. Uh, have you heard of the Lake City Quiet Pills? The what? It, so this is an interesting story. If you Google Lake City Quiet Pills. Uh -huh. You'll find a bunch of articles about it and a bunch of um, uh, there's a, a videos on YouTube explaining it. And it started off, I think it was in 2009 on Reddit. And there was this user called Religion of Peace. And it's a really interesting look at the rabbit holes that the Internet detectives can go down and how good people are at uncovering little facts and, and sort of nuggets of... Uh, of information that they can then expand upon about this weird this this guy basically was this creepy guy who was like a moderator on the the now defunct thank goodness jailbait section of Reddit right where holy <laughs> shit that was a section yes <laughs> Reddit Reddit had a has had a lot of fucked up shit in its past and that's just one of them because they didn't moderate it as heavily and I guess it was making the money, so they just kind of left it up there. I don't know. But nowadays, it's much like a lot that kind of thing gets shut down much more quickly. But at the time, in the early days of Reddit, it was much. It wasn't as as used. It wasn't like the center of the internet for as many people as it is now. Most people just go to Reddit. Oh, I saw that on Reddit. You know what I mean? A lot of devs use Reddit to announce stuff. They use it to get feedback about their games. Yeah. And Reddit is a big thing, right? It's obviously a, a, a huge website, but back then it wasn't as big. I remember it in 2009. It was like, you know, it was, it was something, but it wasn't as big as it is now. Anyway, so this guy was this creepy mod on that. It got shut down, but people sort of started looking at what he was doing. He had a website called Lake City Quiet Pills, which was like an image hosting thing, linked, linked to some image hosting thing that he had. But people found that behind... Like, for a start, he claimed to have been in the military, claimed to be 79 years old, then in another post he claimed to be 70, he claimed to have served in World War II, all this kind of stuff. Um, but essentially, behind his um, message board, uh, sorry, behind his website, there was a hidden message board. And you could get there through the code of the website, you could find it. And it was all these sort of listings that looked like they were advertising for mercenary work, like right. actual mercenary work. <laughs> and it, it's nice. interesting. Anyway, go and look it up. It's an interesting little conspiracy. My friend Simon link, linked it to me. I hadn't heard of it before, but it's an interesting one. But I just thought it was it was funny what you were saying about um, people looking for clues and wanting to unravel mysteries. The moment you present people with a mystery, they want to know more. And the internet is good at <laughs> good and bad at generating mysteries because people are like, what is this? Oh, you know, I mean, look, think about Pizzagate is an example that people thought. People thought this was some conspiracy that was cooked up to 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 have some pedophile ring running out of a fucking pizza parlor or whatever. And oh, they spent they're involved at the highest echelons of government, and everything. And the guy went down there with a rifle to bust the kids out. It was no ring; it was just a pizza parlor. And all you know, it's people can go nuts <laughs> with this stuff. Fuck. This honestly, there's a lot of of podcasts and YouTube channels devoted to these kind of yeah. Kind of creepy pastory, but also kind of true, true urban, uh, not urban myths, but kind of, I don't know, conspiracy theory stories. Like, it's so interesting. There's so many of them out there. And I, I, I would recommend but it's some crazy by because, like, Flax saying that, I'm like, oh my God, that is just like the epitome of like, you know, tinfoil hat wearing internet dwellers or whatever. You know what I mean? But, at the same time, like, you know, they 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 found out what, like, Joseph Fritzl was doing. And you just think, I could not have imagined that happening in, yeah. like, a million years. Like, yeah. when I when I first heard about that, I was actually legitimately shocked. I was, yeah, I same. Could I could not fucking believe, believe it. it. Like, that that is something in this world that has happened to a group of people uh, at the hands of, like, a guy or whatever. Like... Now that I know, like that it's happened or whatever, I I, I think like okay, yeah, I could see like how that could happen, and, and it's like fucking brutal or whatever. But it was it was just so, so shocking. So like I don't know, maybe there's like I'm not saying that I would go out and support like everybody's uh, move to uncover a conspiracy or whatever. But man, it some of the shit that happens in this world is unfathomable it's just i know so uh, it's so interesting to hear some of these like like um it's almost like a james bond movie plot or something or some shitty yeah. detective drama yeah. plot I, I i like all these i think the internet has this great power when it brings together a community of people you know the wisdom of 
of crowds. So there's this thing where, for example, um, if you get like a bottle, you know that classic carnival thing of a big jar full of like um, marbles or... Yes, or, guess how many or, marbles are in this jar. Guess how... Yeah, yeah. Or chocolates in this thing or whatever. If you take like all of the guesses, they will be wild. Okay, they'll be wild. There'll be some really low. There'll be some really high. There'll be some in the middle. But if you average them all, you tend to get very close to the right number. So wait until near the end of the day, then get your calculator out, whack all the numbers in, take the average, bosh that down. Yeah, and that actually will be very likely to to be as uh, and so that's the, this wisdom of crowds thing of the internet. Sure, there's going to be outliers and crazies on there, but on average, like if you if you and and, and uh, the, you know we know this from Twitch chat and, and and stuff like this. Like if you ask Twitch chat a question, someone in there will have the answer, and it's kind of sometimes you also get a lot of wrong answers. Sure, oh, yeah. but the the answer the right answer will be in there and it's like it's it's interesting when you get like people because there's there's a couple of documentaries on this sort of stuff as well with internet detectives doing their work like don't fuck with cats is one um which i don't think is a very good one actually but it's this this case of where these guys were kind of hunting there was a couple of people hunting this sort of guy who was uh, uploading videos of him um being cruel to animals and uh, he obviously and they sort of they searched for him on the classic internet detectory stuff, really, to find out where he'd been. They went through his pictures. They looked at metadata. They looked at the backgrounds. They tried to pinpoint where in the world he was being. They looked at traffic lights, and they were like, "Oh, he must be in Canada." All this stuff, and it's 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 interesting. You get what you get is a couple of very passionate individuals mm. who've got a lot of free time on their hands, taking up a hobby kind of project and and the people who put the time into these passion projects put so much more time into anyone who was employed doing that you know in a, in a sense like you never find more time commitment than someone who is passionate or, or pr- pr- productive time commitment uh you know like for example i don't know like if i have to make a spreadsheet in the office or whatever to to pay everyone or do something important i'm like i put it off and i fuck around and I hate doing it and whatever but if I have to if I'm playing a game of I don't know a new a new game's come out and, I've, and I'm like oh I wonder whether this thing's better than this thing and before I know it I've got like a three page spreadsheet with all of its all this analysation it's like okay a cavalry charge uh, adds plus one damage and so if I work that out you know suddenly I've I've built like an EVE Online mega spreadsheet for it just because I wanted to see what happened and it's weird how we are driven by also things that we don't want to like if we think it's worth it if we think it's a job if we think it's work we're like oh i don't want to do that i like, kind of i don't know whereas like j- just things that feel like they're for your own joy or even just to just to just to troll someone i think the amount of effort people are willing to put into like pranks or yeah or troll or just to surprise someone or sometimes like i don't know just to, just to, just as a gift mm. for someone you know sometimes people can spend you know, days making a gift for someone, <laughs> you know, and it's it's amazing what we'll do. What what it's really weird what drives us as as humans, and I'm just really interested in it. Yeah, and yeah, these conspiracy theories they they latch onto something kind of I don't know that we want to. I mean, it, I, I will also note that the people are very quick to get internet detective on someone who they don't like. Like there's a yeah. real groundswell of effort. Well, yeah, there's a much more motivation when somebody yeah. when somebody is disliked though. Or... Like someone someone posts a video and they're just like. I remember that a while back there was this thing. I can't remember the exact details. It was something to do with a poker game, and her boyfriend went off to play poker, and she claimed that she couldn't make it because she was sick, and she posted this video, and it was there were like some kind of I can't remember the details. I probably shouldn't even bring it up because I'm so fucking vague. But essentially, from the videos that she posted, some people found out exactly where she was just from this wall that she'd filmed <laughs> behind her, and they were like, if she was at this point at this time, there's no way she could have got to so and so by this time, and they like planned out the route she would have gone and where she must have been and it was it was just amazing because people would just figure this shit out you've got hundreds potentially thousands of people pouring over every tiny bit of information yeah it must i mean i I honestly think if you were a lawyer and you had a case just whack it on the internet and just say (laughs) guys i'm looking for any details you can find about this see what they dig up yeah and they'll just dig Uh, up all kinds of crazy details the danger danger is though of course as we have seen in a couple of cases of, of ruining some people's lives oh god yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you've read uh, um, john this, ronson's yeah. book so you've been publicly shamed which i recommend to anybody uh, i recommend all of john ronson's books actually but um th- his one about internet shame was about 
um, this girl, this woman tweeted something. She was getting on a plane and she tweeted, just going, just he heading to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. All right. right. And <laughs> she tweeted that. She only had like a hundred <laughs> followers or something like that. Was That's hilarious. I know. So she tweeted <laughs> See, that. If I tweeted that, that would be a, that would be my tweet of the year. <laughs> you should, she do, tweet, it. You should she do it. She tweeted that. And it blew up while she was in the air. This tweet blew up, and people were absolutely in the air. Oh shit! That's, that's an her. international accident. The, the, the tweet, obviously, the plane didn't blow up. She's in the air, and people were doing a running countdown until she landed and checked her phone. And her Twitter feed just would have blown up with all, you know, all these <clears throat> people slagging her off and all the rest of it. She got fired from her job, all oh kinds of stuff, while God. she's in the air. Yeah. So she takes off, sends this tweet: "Lol, hope I don't get AIDS." And then lands, and her life is in ruins because of this <laughs> oh one my tweet. God. And it, it's an amazing story. And it, he goes and talks to these people, and and sort of finds out what's going on with them. Like, um, what, what happened to them afterwards? You know, what was the public reaction? What kind of responses did they get? How bad was it? There and are some of them are amazing. people out there who just wait for this stuff to happen, though, oh, and of they become these like massive troll warlord ringleaders for. Pushing and pushing and pushing this stuff as well, right? Like getting people to the point where they're like trying to figure out how long it's going to be before she lands and stuff like that. Yeah. And most of them are regular posters on the somethingawful.com forums, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as it yeah. turns out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, I know, I know the exact, um, like I, I, I hadn't heard of that story. That's fucking hilarious. But there's so many stories just like that where people uh, will just go out of their way to make this person's existence so it's fucking It's not like miserable. they even give a shit. Like, yeah. that's the thing. That nobody really that's cares. It. They have no investment in it whatsoever other than... The drama. Just this living for this, this fucking, um, you know, hurricane of drama that yeah, they can get yeah, they into love the it. center of. Yeah, they love it. It's hilarious. Oh, Everybody's got to have a hobby. You know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if you're good at something, you know, you should, you should, you should do it more, I, I say. If you're if you're good at, at stirring the you know what I mean stirring up the pot and and yep. and getting people motivated to go out of their way to do some internet detective shit and stuff like that well why not I guess so yeah. what are you gonna what are you gonna get your daughter to encourage her to keep spying or are you gonna try and encourage her to not spy what's what's the what's Look, the strategy I, I don't think there's any harm in her noting down the things that our neighbors do it gives her something to do in the evening it's better than her just staring at a phone or whatever. She loves it, and it's. I think it's quite sweet. I think it's quite sweet. I think it's purely quite funny. because I love the way she notes things down, like strange. You know what I mean? Like a strange little note that she's made about this guy taking his dog for a walk. Called the dog Hunter. Strange. I was like, what? is that strange? Like, it's not strange. Oh, I just love her little hilarious. view of things. It's but just maybe so she's funny. seeing stuff that we don't know. You know, Hunter. It's a very American-sounding name for a dog. You yeah, know, it is. Yeah, like, mm, she also might have misheard it. It's very, very simple that she misheard. Oh, it. he could have been called the dog a cunter. You cunter, get that lead on. You never know. Right. I well, mean, I'm worried she'll sense. see something awful then out a, there. Then there's a situation of pet abuse. Exactly. So reported. she might have uncovered that. Yeah, that's the first. The first. She is like a right little Veronica Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just thought it was funny. Ugh, I, I, I just think that's really cool. Um, I think you need to get her like uh, a, a one of those black trench coats with the high collar. Yes, you know. Well, I, I used to have a book when I was a kid. Um, I think it was made by Osborne. I don't know if they're still around. They are, but they they are okay. So they they did a bunch of books for kids back in the day, and they were like how to be a spy, and it was like little techniques that you can use to send secret messages to your friends. Uh, all these kind of like really low level spy tricks that you could pick up Code from watching stuff. a movie. Yeah, all stuff like that. Lock picking. Yeah. yeah. Well, there wasn't lock picking. There was nothing illegal. It was all quite sweet. Looking back at the time, I thought this is amazing. I'm a fucking spy <laughs> po now. Poisoning. Lock picking isn't illegal. Lock picking is 100 percent illegal. What are you talking about? Is you, it? You, what, to teach yourself to lock pick? No, that's okay. But you're you're talking about lock picking. If I'm learning to lock pick, I'm going to unlock. I'm not locks. talking about breaking and entering. I'm talking about you're just fucking... talking about stealing a couple of bottle caps. Just and talking about. Learning how stuff. to pick your way back into your own house. Right, that's fine. Out. But if I'm talking about spying and you say, yeah, you could learn lock picking, I'm obviously going to pick locks to go into people's houses and, and put uh, bugs and things in there, aren't I, to listen in on them. That's what well, I'm like thinking. In the context of spying, you're not worms. just doing it for practice. The state secrets like 
Where is that man dropping his children off? Who ordered that Ocado delivery? You know, that's the kind of detail is you want to get Is that man into. really an athlete? Exactly. Yeah. Her yeah. attempt at spelling athlete was remarkable, bless yes, her. Nice, nice. Um, <laughs> she tried. On a side note, I just want to um, I just want to say, totally off topic, I started watching The Mandalorian, which I never got around to watching. And oh, yeah. I'm about I half, still haven't watched I'm it. I'm about ha- halfway through it, and I really like it. I, I've been yeah, really enjoying it. Yeah, it's good. It's a good show. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I so, love the, yeah. the IG-88 style robot that he meets at the start. I thought it was really, really I was cool. surprised that it was written by John Favreau as well. Yeah. It, yeah. He didn't strike me as the kind of guy who would be able to um, to, to write a, a good Star Wars series. But there you go. No. Well, he did Iron Man and stuff. I mean, he, he's been he's been doing that kind of movie for a long time. Oh, I didn't even like, realize he, he, he did he that. He used to be an actor. Yeah, yeah that's right. I only, I only remember as, as an actor. That's why I was surprised I didn't he's, realize He's he done did. loads of writing and directing oh, now. Right, like, okay. He's moved into that. Yeah. All right, he's, okay. a, he's really, really good. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm interested in seeing it. Did you watch it on Disney Plus? Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so he was the... He, was, he directed Iron Man, Iron Man 2... A film called Chef, which is apparently really good. The Lion King yeah, remake. Seen it. Oh yeah, that's right. He was yeah. working on the Lion King live action. And he was um, like executive producer on a shitload of all the Avengers movies, like wow. Endgame, Infinity War, Ultron, all of that, and okay. all the Iron Man I, movies. I, I, and I didn't realize. Like I said, I, I mean, I I don't know much about right, him right. other than what movies he was okay I saw in him Chef. in like a long time ago, and that's why I just out of nowhere. Yeah, this in, guy uh, just, like, what was that film called with him and and Vince Vaughn? Was it called Swingers, where they go to Vegas? Yeah, yeah, I think that's, I saw that. That was too. such a good movie back yeah. in the day. Yeah, it's a, that's an old one, though, isn't it? Very, yeah, that was 95 or something like that. But yeah, no, uh, Mandalorian is, is good, though. It's worth checking it's out. Good. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's nice. It's like, I like how sort of, um, I like how it's like a bit gritty, you know? It's like, um, it's it, it's just got like that, I don't know, it's got like a bit of like a Rogue One feel to it. I guess they sort of take place in similar timelines if, like yes across it felt the, rogue one yeah, yeah across the star wars universe or whatever but uh it's yeah it's really good and the guy who the guy who plays the uh the mandalorian is uh well he's always got the mask on so you never see him but he's that guy from uh, narcos you know the um oh yeah um, yes i think it's also got and, the right amount and of he humor. also played uh what's his face in uh, game of thrones as well the um from Dorne. the viper yeah. Yeah. Pedro you killed him! Pedro he got his head blown Pasquale. up by the mountain. That was I remember watching that That's and right, I yeah. was so shocked. I actually had to pause it and take a break. I was like, it was so <laughs> shocking. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. It was oh. so grisly and horrific. Saw, yeah, that scene was meme. terrifying. I saw a meme the other day and it was like, it's this guy looking sad. And it was I can't I can't remember what the fucking meme is, but it's basically um a Game of Thrones fans thinking about Every time they think about Game of Thrones, they see another plot hole versus right. Breaking Bad viewers see, finding another Easter egg on their 500th watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. It's like, it's, it's like, oh. yeah, it's Game of Thrones, man. It's yeah, I played a bit of the, um, uh, there's a Game of Thrones miniatures game out. Me and Duncan have been playing it a bit before the office closed, but, but we played it on tabletop. And it's like a little miniatures game. It's good fun. Um, but it's really sort of rekindled my joy of game of thrones and i started reading the um the og game of thrones again because it's so different like and so kind of mm. weird and yeah it is i mean I, I still remember how exciting the the, the early series so many, were. Um, little stories that they um missed out on in the show but the books never elaborated on or never got back around to to finishing off and stuff but uh, he's never going to finish it he's never going to finish it I'm, no I'm but even we're talking like early on there was like there were there were plots that were in motion and characters that were being developed that like just are were just going to go nowhere or never come back to them and stuff like I that. I think that's the problem isn't it? Yeah. He, he caused this it, he basically it like it was like it's, it's like doing spinal surgery, you know, he he like cut he cut the spine open and all the fucking nerve endings went everywhere yeah. and he has to now tie them back together but they're just spaghetti and it's like You've been watching how the lost. fuck do I do this? You know that bit where what's his face has like uh, grayscale growing on his like oh, yeah. growing on him and stuff in the books he doesn't get it. It's just this completely different guy who has like a claim to some <laughs> kingdom like within Westeros right. who's been banished and comes back after all these years. But his big secret is that he's got grayscale growing like very slowly on his hand. So he always wears gloves and stuff. 
but a- again, it just goes nowhere because it's just there's just nowhere yeah. for it to go, sort of thing. Like, uh, and maybe they would have elaborated on it a little bit more. Like, there's a lot later on but in the TV show. There's it, they start teleporting up and down, don't they, all over the place? People just randomly are teleporting across the world. Yeah. It's like what it, I don't know. Anyway, hopefully one day, maybe. I don't know. It's it's definitely left a bad taste in my mouth, but I think everyone's also on that on board because it's such a shame. It's so good, uh, but no, the books are helping me rekindle my joy of it. Yeah, so I will sh- shout out to the books. Ned Stark's You've wife is like a uh, is like um, she, you know she she gets killed. Um, yeah, but at uh, the red wedding. Yeah, in the books, she's still like she she you know like you know how some of these people uh, get killed, but then they like they come back or they can't be killed there's like this this notion it's like um what's his face um in the show as well remember like he like got his arm chopped off and like he was the 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 lord of light guy the the, the yes, guy with the fiery that sword guy, yeah. yeah yeah so like in in the books that's like ned uh like cat is it kate or cat star caitlin K- star yeah she comes back as lady frost whisper that's it she's like <laughs> she's like a ghoul, she's like a ghoul who wanders around like where she was killed sort of thing and but like that was the sort of that's the lead up to this this idea that there's like almost like the lich king or something you know like there's right. one one person that who cannot be killed because they've got like unfinished business or i don't know lady some, frost whisper some shit i mean like all that. some yeah. garbage there's a lot of garbage there actually is. i will say there's a lot of garbage in the book they've then. released the frost whisper for men and now lady frost whisper hey but there's also in the books flax there's so much more about dorn there's like tons of stuff that happens in i want to know about yeah the well they, they elaborate on dorn a lot more in the books and the, the series but, but they you, just, you know you know when uh when what's his name the guy who you just don't went, learn anything about it in the series but uh, the guy that just talked about khaleesi all the time the one who got grayscale they go off to these weirdo islands and stuff and there's obviously an ancient civilization that was pretty similar to the current civilization that's going on in westeros there and something happened there and there's other bits of the world they haven't explored i don't know what happened and all that stuff what's going on over there yeah we never find out i want to know there's... and i know that they said they were going to do series based around that but they cocked up the last few seasons so badly there's no appetite for got anymore there's so tons got of stuff dead. in when, when, when Arya is in um i shouldn't have brought it up guys <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> there's Why tons, there's tons of up. stuff when uh what's his face um the the big guy is in um is it like the citadel or whatever like there's there's tons of stories around that and stuff too like it just elaborates a lot more on the places and i think like the show the show was fine because i sort of knew about these places from reading the books prior to watching the the show anyway but if i hadn't read the books then i would have definitely felt it more like whoa fuck where are they now like what's going on like they don't right the last couple of seasons they just stopped explaining anything or uh, there was like no elaboration on it. <laughs> they just, just gave like, up, didn't they? They didn't have any source material, though. They wanted to go off and do Star Wars stuff. They they said that. They said they wanted to wrap it up and go do Star Wars stuff. That's it. Yeah. Where the, they followed yeah. the Disney money. They did, anyway, they did that's an hour. Anyway. We've got to call it because you you've got to. Thank start. you, everyone. Sorry for the rant about Game of Thrones, but I I will just say there is a lot of really good stuff in that in the Game of Thrones universe. I really like yeah. it, and I've been getting yeah. back into it in by playing the miniatures game yeah. on tabletop. That's just just a fucking shout out to that, but um. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, please don't eat any polar bear livers no. uh, and, and uh, stay inside. Oh, uh, the Bodega audiobook is is on sale. The, yeah, there is a Bodega audiobook now on, on Audible. Audible. Yeah, I think you can. You can get, get it, it if you get a free trial. I don't know. We should probably put proper effort in for this. No, that'll do. They'll figure it out. <laughs> do. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.